Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. How you been? Ah, busy. <laughs> yeah. You still uh have you have you been tested? No. God, you so I know so much more about the testing now. Yeah. I'm so glad they didn't implement like mass testing because now I don't want to get tested ever. Well, because they I mean, did you not know they jam a thing so far back? I, did, I didn't know what it was. I always thought it was just like, oh, a nasal swab, like no big deal. I didn't realize no, it was a nasal pharyngeal deep. swab, which is how like I've never had one of those before. So I guess I'd seen the term and I was like, yeah, just nasal swab. Like, no, <laughs> no, I had read about that early on because I was curious whenever Donald Trump said he had been tested and then they were do you not think he has been no 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 there's no absolute there's absolutely no way because they the day after he, someone failed to brief this man on what the test was and that's how i know what the test is because the day after he claimed he'd been tested he's doing these daily press briefings they asked him so you got tested what was it like he's like yeah it's a test you know test it's not pleasant but it's a test no test <laughs> a pee in the bottle and uh yeah, no, I yeah. Came out right. Like, <laughs> I wish someone had a follow up. Like, so exactly what happened? Because you could tell no one briefed the man to tell him what the test was like that he supposedly had taken. Um, because, yeah, I looked up afterwards and I was like, oh, no, 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 there's no way he would have been that calm if he had, had the damn thing shoved that far back in his damn sinuses. Um, you know what's so funny is we've had so many employees and patients tested at this point at my hospital that I've never heard even those who have been tested that I, like my my colleagues that have been tested that I know about. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever talked about how bad the test was. Huh. So either maybe it's not as bad as I think it is now that I know what it is, or maybe it, they just understood it more and right. think they that knew everybody what they knows get, what it is. So like, like, they- it, but it, there's just so many people who are like, oh, no, I tested negative, so nope, it's no big deal. Or, or we just had some recent people who have tested positive that you know are relatively closely, closely with. And I'm just like, oh, they never talked about how bad the test was or anxiety about getting tested or anything like that. Like, I have anxiety about getting tested <laughs> if, I, if I would have to get tested. Uh, just because, and I don't know, maybe it's one of those things like, if you have to draw my blood, that doesn't bother me one bit. Like, I would... We were actually talking about some of the people that we need to uh, prepare for our stand-up emergency department I was talking about. Like, or we have a an emer- new emergency department built just in case we have, like, a big surge of patients, which is, you know, the numbers don't look like we have it right now, but New York makes us think we're going to have it very soon. Mm-hmm. They were talking about, like, these people who are in emergency department prepared, and do they have IV therapy or phlebotomy come and do all their blood draws? And all the leadership is like, no, we will teach them how to draw blood because if this thing really gets that bad, they need to know how to draw blood because there's going to be that many more people coming in that they need to deal with. And I'm even thinking in my mind, I'm like, I'll go there and be like the guinea pig, the cushion for them to go like practice blood draws with because that doesn't bother me. Yeah, needles suck, whatever. It hurts. It doesn't feel good. But I've let multiple people practice doing IVs on me and practice blood draws on me. Um, I remember one day we were super bored in the emergency department, which is not an often thing that you would say. But me and one of the guys that I worked with in the ER at the time, there was two brand new doctors. They had just started their emergency department residency. And they really wanted to sit with us and like, they wanted us to teach them how to do blood draws. And we literally didn't have a patient for two hours, which is unheard of in the ER. It was like on different times of something. We don't know. <laughs> but we both just said... Oh, hell, let's get some stuff together. You guys can go practice on us. And we sat in the chair and these doctors, the doctors looked at us like we were fucking insane. And they both tried and both failed miserably and eventually like got it. But we, we were pin pushers for them. Oh. I mean, it's better that you let them fail on you than patients, I guess. Oh, they, your hospital is looking competent. Dude, this I was just standing on top of our pyramid. Like, our, not the pyramid, but like the, the, the mm. beam, the beacon down here. Yeah. Talking to the world, not even looking around because I didn't think anything was wrong. A, a, a creeper just came up and blew up part of the part well, of the thing. Like we don't have a, a working beacon anymore because we don't have enough blocks. Huh? Hey, one, you know what's two. interesting about that is I can still see the beacon in the sky from here. Yeah, well, the beacon it's still running, but there's three blocks missing. I guess it's like the lower tier, so the upper tier is still running. Ah, uh, okay. So I was about to say, it, I guess it doesn't render this far. Regeneration. Remember how to tell these beacons work or not? We're three iron blocks short right now. Though I need to go get. Well, way to write uh, ruin stuff, Jeff. 
Sorry. But yeah, so it's one of those things where it's mm-hmm. like, you know, you talk about blood draws. And I know some people are freaked out about blood and freaked out about needles. They would never think like they see a sharp object and they like, you know, faint because it's just that's where their anxiety is ridden. Right. That stuff doesn't bother me. But you talk about shoving something back in my nose like that. And I'm like, nope. <laughs> nope. Like catheters. Catheters are one thing that I've had in my life before uh, as a child. And remember to this day how terrible it was. And though I've placed and dealt with so many patients with the catheter in, like a Foley catheter, mm. that didn't seem to think that it was even that big of a deal for days on end. Dudes with catheters walking around with them, not even thinking it's painful. It still freaks me the hell out because I had a very terrible experience with it. Maybe they were into sounding. I mean, it's, it's possible, but I'm pretty confident that if every patient I've ever seen with a Foley catheter is into sounding, like there's a new normal that needs to be established here. Are you saying that someone's kink is abnormal, Jeff? No, I'm saying if they have that kink, that's that. There's that many people with that kink. It's not abnormal kink. I mean, no kinks should be considered abnormal, Jeff. Are you kink shaming? Abnormal. (laughs) I'm doing the opposite of kink shaming. You're not even listening. (laughs) You just want to think that I'm kink shaming. You're like you're like one of those people who's like, I'm determined that you're cheating on me, no matter what you say. (laughs) Right? And they'll be like, No, no, no. You can go have sex with whoever you want. I wouldn't even care. You're shaming me. Yeah, there's that review. Have I've you never ever had, had a catheter? No, I've tried sounding, and I don't. It wasn't pleasurable. It didn't hurt though. But I mean, I didn't like try what? to yam it. Oh, jam what did you it. use? Yeah, what did you use for it? A sounding needle. Like they sell Wait, like what? There's special needles. For yeah, it? like it's. Uh, this is where it's so outside of a kink of mine that I didn't even know. It wasn't a kink of mine either, but I was it. like. If people are like doing this, like what's it like? I've tried to massage my prostate before too, and I, I can't, I can't successfully have an orgasm well, like that either. Okay, so wait, wait, define sounding to me then, because maybe I'm not understanding. So well, it's the just the fact you say sounding needle. I think I am thinking the right thing. Well, like a sounding needle, it almost prostate, looks like a, like a massaging prostate and sounding. From what I understand, are two completely different they are. orifices. Right, right, two two different holes completely. Um, but both of them are jamming something up in there. Um, <laughs> it's like saying, I tried to swallow something once too, but yeah, I just wasn't the same. It's like sounding. <laughs> right. So like a sounding needle, it kind of looks like a chopstick, except it gradually gets bigger. Um, and it's got like different gauges on it. Kind of like, you know, people like stretch their ears or whatever. Um, there's like different like rings around it that show you like, all right, I can sound it that this, this, this width or whatever. Cause like it gets wider. Um, as you go up the needle, basically, needle is probably not the right word because that makes it sound like it's sharp. Because it's not sharp at the end; it just gets small. N- needle does make it feel like it's sharp, but I was kind of hoping it was not. <laughs> no, it's it's definitely not sharp. It's just uh, like I said the best way I know to describe it is like a chopstick, except the end is smaller than a chopstick. So, it's, so you're it's, saying it didn't hurt? I mean, like I said, I didn't force it beyond the point where, like, it it didn't feel good. It didn't. Was there like markings on? Was there markings on it? Because I want to know how much you forced. There were markings, but it's this has been a long time. This has been like five or six years. But are you saying like half the chopstick in? It just didn't feel good, so I stopped. Are you saying like the tip barely penetrated? Oh no, no, I got pretty deep in there. I got you know probably I'd say four inches in. Oh my god! Because like it's. Well, I was the one in, in control of the needle, but I mean, oh, it got, that's it, even worse. That's so even worse. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just me because I've. Uh, I remember being. Probably I was in my late teens or very early twenties, and I came across like a first porn. This is still back when like there wasn't a porn site you could just go to and get all the free porn that you wanted. It was you know you were mainly downloading porn clips and stuff from you know peer-to-peer sharing networks versus you know because everything was like a paid site online right uh i remember downloading a bunch of porn when i said coincidentally i had moved from uh my hometown in michigan to the in the district area actually it was more virginia but when i was doing co-oping and i was uh and i did my co-op out here but i still lived at home so all my friends and family were back in michigan so I didn't have anything else to do. So I started downloading like a lot of porn and like experimenting with a lot of stuff like that. And I remember coming across a guy who stuck his fingers in his his 
yeah like you know, i mean you could stretch it a, that far basically well like, as a nurse i honestly don't even know what what is the fucking medical term for it like pee hole like <laughs> that's what i want to call it like the urethra yeah, yeah. like yeah, it, urethra. It, it, but it's not it's not all the way up the urethra is it it's, i guess all the way to the end of the penis it would be the urethra right i think so that's my understanding yeah, i, I mean, it, don't fucking I know but is. i mean just, that's i think so I, I never think about it as being like that all the way to the end mm-hmm the bladder i don't think the bladder have connected all the way to the end but it truly is i mean it's just a tube you know right. that goes from one to the other so I, yeah i guess he stuck his fingers in his urethra and he like stretched it open and i was intrigued at first because i was like whoa like this is something i didn't know about that is pleasurable i remember trying to even like not a full finger but even just trying to like play with the hole a little bit and it was <laughs> so sensitive and so painful to me yeah, that I just can like, oh my, it makes my toes like <sighs> move back and forth on each other as in like it's the worst type of thought process in my life that I can think of. Maybe it's because I've had that Foley before, though, and maybe. I knew how bad that hurt as a child. Um, and maybe I'm just super sensitive in that area because like I said, I've placed many Foley's and a lot of people are just like don't even have like a reaction from it. It like, doesn't hurt them that bad. I remember like as it went in further, it started like popping. It was like a popping that's, sound. I think that, that was like cartilage like something or something. Did something wrong. <laughs> it didn't hurt though. Like it got to the point where like it yeah, was. When I hear weird noises, as long as it doesn't hurt, just keep on fucking pushing. I mean, I good. I was still waiting again for like any sensation, you know, like because I mean, you know, sometimes extreme pain in a sexual situation can be okay, um, depending on you know your depending you on are. what you're into, <laughs> right. sure, and what the pain is from. Um, but, uh, I don't know. This didn't do anything for me in a positive or negative way. It was just, uh, I got this fucking chopstick in my dick now and I'm not ready to eat sushi. Basically. Wow. Like, it, I, I don't know if I've ever heard of somebody who tried something like that. and was just like, it was yeah, neither here nor there. Like no big deal. Let's just, uh, do a I've, I've I remember a things. I, well, I, I, and I'm, and I'm not against Ooh. anybody trying anything that they want to try. I remember dating a super 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 into anything anal uh -huh. and she actually preferred anal sex so i think we, i've talked about her before she preferred anal sex over vaginal sex yeah which is weird to me but she did like she absolutely did but she also was so into trying to do anal things with me mm. she was like super addicted to like doing anything and i let her play and there's some parts of doing things back there that i enjoy like that's when you said try to give yourself a prostate exam all right Not exam. Had some, <laughs> uh, well a prostate massage excuse right. me you know i've uh, i've had some fingers being like shoved deep up there in a sexual way that was like wow like some of it made me like orgasm super hard sometimes it was just like oh i'm not feeling this today you know type of deal so i'm all about that but i remember she was so determined she bought anal beads that she just loved to basically one end to the other was like inside of her like the first instant she got and she didn't think it was like large enough and she was determined to play with them with me and it was like one ball deep and i was like nope 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 and by the way i don't i, I don't mean like you know testicle ball anal beads yeah work. no they're little the you know, first have... beads tiny and the first beads tiny like, it was like one ball maybe two balls deep and i was like oh no Nope, not something I like, not something I like. And uh, she was like, oh, okay. And instead of, like, being a nice sexual partner and, like, removing it or trying, she just tried, shoved as hard as she could to try to get as many in as she could because she decided that, that was her only chance. And it, like, made me scream and jump off the bed and, like, rip them out and, like, feel like I just shit myself because <laughs> So and that was like that kind of ruined my uh, my. That's kind of bullshit, to though. Like she should have done that. Like, no, she shouldn't have. But she's a she's a crazy, crazy, crazy person. Um, she was a crazy person for many other re reasons, which made her very fun sexually. But man, if you found something that she was into sexually that you weren't necessarily crazy, people can take it a little to the extreme and uh, <laughs> decide that oh, if I like it, you must too. You just haven't had enough of a taste of it, you know. Which is not the right way to go about. No, things. yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, people have to respect that not everyone's into the same thing. But I will tell you, no matter how hard she shoved those anal beads in my uh, in my, it uh, the thought of doing something to the other orifice is way more like it's toe. Cl literally, toe clenching is the word I use as like I'm sitting here, my toes are like. I don't know. Do you have one of those reactions to something where you know something's going to be bad that your body does 
like a visceral yeah. reaction in some way. Yeah. Mine's the toes, my big toe and little toe, like the toe next to it are like moving back and forth on each other, <laughs> thinking of like the pain like that it would in- endure or the past experience that I've had with it. It's like, oh, that freaky like thing. And that's what's happening right now, thinking of you in a chopstick in your penis. It has nothing to do with like you specifically in a chopstick in your penis. <laughs> For me, it's like if I get really, sc- if I get like, like uh, jump scared, my feet hurt. Like I get like a quick pain in my feet. I don't know if it's like, well, that's like interesting. Fright or flight. Like I need to be flying, like running. So well, in theory, I... fight or flight should not include pain. Basically, your pain should kind of completely subside with all the adrenaline because mm, otherwise, right. there's no flight reflex. If you know, right. yeah, no. But like, like jump scares, it makes my feet hurt. Like just for a second, it's not not a long thing at all. But it's like oh, quick, it's not a long thing at all. It very well could be the surge of adrenaline and the surge of like catecholamines and stuff that are like surging through your body. It mm. really could be that that your body doesn't know how to handle the response at first, as it like as it's a, as it's a sudden increase, right? That it just kind of comes out in like foot pain for a moment and then goes back. I guess that's possible. Huh. Yeah, I definitely have that. Um... Yeah, but mine's yeah, not are. a my, my my toes rubbing together is not like a uh, <laughs> oh just for a second my toes rub together. It's a no, I'm thinking about it and I I almost like want to vomit, but it's my response as opposed to vomiting. Wow. Yeah, no, I don't I don't I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah I have, there wasn't anything that I've tried place. that was super awful i guess um that i can that i I remember i mean like there's some there's there are things i won't try like uh any kind of like water sports or scat or anything like that i'm not into even yes i I was thinking when you said that i'm like water it's like i don't know if i'd be like i don't think it'd be anything at all that turned me on by any means but i wouldn't have a problem with somebody like maybe as long as it was in an environment where it was easy to clean up, like I don't want some yeah, chick like standing over me and yeah, some chick standing over me while I'm laying in bed and just be like, I'm gonna pee all over you right now, and then we're gonna have like your bed and your sheets are gonna be just covered. Yeah. In bed. Like not into that, but if you did it in the shower because you were just experimenting, that wouldn't bother me like almost at all. Like I don't even, I don't even think that would like gross me out at all. But if you decided to shit on me for some reason. <laughs> I just, I, that's just one of those things that I'm just like, I can't ever think of that in a sexual manner by, yeah. I, by any, I can't even really think of peeing in a sexual manner either, but I can, I would like let it happen because I don't think that's a big deal. See, I, I guess whenever I was saying I wasn't into water sports, I was more thinking that I'd be the one doing the peeing. I'm definitely not getting peed on. Uh, I almost don't think that I could do the peeing only because, like, the way your vast deference and stuff works, the, you know, the, the the connection in the penis to the, you know, all the sperm and all that stuff, it's, it's one tube. It's not like a tube that has two connections in it at all time. Like, you can't pee and come at the same time. Right. It's medically impossible. The so tube, are you like, saying, like, you're, you'd be too hard? Well, that's what I'm saying. If I was doing something in a sexual manner, like I, I think about it from the perspective of if I were to pee on you, that means I'm not aroused enough to be horny because the tubes are connected so that my urine is still coming through. Right. And, you know, haven't you ever like come or been super hard, but then had to really like have the urge to pee at the same time? And you seen the movie Me, Myself and Irene? No, we've had we've had this conversation before, but no, yeah. I haven't. Um, but, but it's one of those things that, like, it, it's – I can't imagine a situation where I would be in a super sexual, like, mood peeing on somebody because it almost, to me, is, like, the opposite of – Right. I, I mean, I would I, I would be willing – that's the – I guess that's the thing. I'm not into water sports. I'd be willing to try to pee on someone if they were super into it and this is, like, their thing and I was, like, into this person and stuff. I'd try, but I have a shy dick when it comes to like urinating. So like, like even like you know, just like in the in the bathroom stall, if there's people around, I have a hard time peeing. Dude, um, that's so weird that, that you are so more than willing to shove a chopstick up your penis, but <laughs> you can't pee at a urinal and like when somebody's next to you. I can't. Whereas I'm like, I'm like, I can go pee on your shoes if I want to, 
but you come, you bring something close to my pee hole, and I'm just like, I'm gonna like punch you in the face. Do you remember that Minecon Orlando where we were escorted everywhere, like in all the backstages, like everywhere we went, like we were we were we were taken to the bathroom in a group before our panel. Do you remember I, that? Part? I do. It was the first time I felt like I'm an amazing celebrity. <laughs> well, I'll have you know, I had to pee so fucking bad. And all of us were in this bathroom together, and I had to pee just awfully bad. And I went to that panel still having to pee awfully bad because I stood in front of a urinal trying my damnedest to get it to come out. Just please leave my bladder. It wouldn't do it. So I just had to go to that panel having to pee. That's it's like it, it's like no amount of force, no amount of like – I mean like I try to like blank my mind out. Like there are occasions where there's just – it's it's got to be something mental. But whatever it is, I can't overcome it. Whenever. Well, clearly it's something physical. It's just whether it's... <laughs> well, no, it's I think it's more mental by... than physical, honestly. Well, whether it's connected by a mental problem or not, but a physical act of being is what you can't do. So... Wait, sure, yeah, yeah. But like, I think it's because something in my fucking brain won't let me. Um, yeah. You ever seen the movie Waiting? <laughs> Waiting? No. Oh, you should so. watch that. One of, the, one of the main characters in that has a problem with using public urinals and, you know... Because he's got this, this thought that people are just watching him and look at his small dick. Why isn't he <laughs> peeing? Like, like that image. Uh, yeah. My dick's are too big, really. No, oh, that's that's why most people have problems. With those I feel things. like it. I feel like the sound of the urine coming out is gonna <laughs> it's gonna be too loud. I don't, I, I don't really don't know what it is though. To be honest, I don't know what my mental problem is. But um, it's dark and raining. You should come lay in bed with me. Um, <laughs> well, are you going to be peeing on me? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the prostate thing I bought was like a device specifically for it. It was it starts with an A, like A-N-E-A-S, maybe? Something like that? <laughs> it's called the any hole. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like it had all these directions and stuff, and I followed everything to a T, like exactly what it was said to do, and I tried very hard because everyone tells me how this, like, everything you read, everything's about, you know, these, these, pro if you orgasm just from a prostate massage alone, not like your prostate well, being well, touched. Wait, you keep going back and forth between, like, chopsticks for your pee hole and a prostate massage. So I'm, like, so confused. Well, this is a different thing. Like, I, I figured, I thought we covered the, the sounding at this point. So, so, oh, so which, which device are you talking about? You bought a specific device for a prostate massage? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was thinking in my mind it was still. Because <laughs> like I, I read... did you use something for a prostate massage? Uh... <laughs> I was clicking the bed and it just like fireworks shot off. And I was like... uh... Perfect time. Like I read all these articles about the 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 most amazing orgasm a man could ever have and all this shit. It's all this whole prostate thing, and it's like this is the best device for it. And I read like different websites about it and stuff, and all these people just talking about this one specific device. It's like the best one, and it wasn't expensive. It was like thirty bucks or something. So I get this thing, and I'm like, all right, fucking let me go have my alone time with my my plastic prostate massager and see see what she had this orgasm like I've never experienced in my life. And uh, it didn't happen. I, I just, just, I don't know what it is. I can't, can't make it happen. See, I've been with people in my life who have, for one, taken things way too far, but for who have been very experimental enough with me that, like, coming through masturbation to me is enjoyable. Don't get me wrong, but it's way more fulfilling when somebody else is involved. Right. And it doesn't even mean like I'm having sex with them, like just being there, like moaning, stroking, tickling, like something like that. Right. It can be way more enjoyable. And that's why when I've had when I've had women who have been trying to appropriately do like I'm going to like do something back there, like subtly, not like shove a whole thing of anal beads in your ass when you tell me not to like, you know, that that just gets me off so much more. I can't imagine like trying it myself and thinking there was that much more enjoyment in it because it's it's almost part of the act of somebody else doing something taboo to me as opposed to me doing something taboo to myself right i mean maybe that was part of it i don't know like i have definitely had like fingers up my butthole like during a blowjob and like you can def you, you can tell the difference you you can tell the difference in the orgasm when your prostate is being massaged like so i've experienced that i've experienced an orgasm that wasn't just the prostate um, but everything I've read, it? what's that? 
Did it intensify it though? I feel like it or intensified it the like orgasm, but I've also been told by the people that you know, at the time were regularly giving me blowjobs um, that the taste of like my pre cum got grosser when they were touching my prostate, and I don't know how that affects things. Um, that's got to be a mental thing, unless coincidentally every time they touched your prostate, you had had like asparagus the day before. Well, so I do know that there's definitely way more pre cum. Like if you're if you have something like. For me, at least, but I apparently have more pre-cum than I'm supposed to from what I've learned from the internet in the last few years anyways. Um, so, Wait, I don't know. Wow. But like my, how, dude, how much do you have? We've had to have had this conversation. No, we've talked about, I always thought the pre-cum was super sticky and you were telling me about how it's really meant to be like a lubrication for a while. Uh, right. Like that well, was I have a to me lot. At the time. Like, whenever my dick gets hard, it starts leaking profusely. Like, I... If I if my dick is hard, like if I'm like if I'm like dating someone and we're like messing around on the couch or whatever, and my dick's hard and it's and I'm wearing my pants or whatever, like if it if it goes more than like ten five ten minutes, I have to change my underwear because it's too wet. So you're you're like the, the the woman equivalent of a you know squirter. Oh my pant my panty my panties are wet because I was thinking about you. Basically, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So when you had like, so I used to have the problem when I was in like high school, early college, where I would get these random boners out of you know, back wasn't getting some regularly. Uh, boners out of nowhere that in inopportune times that are very embarrassing, and you try to like, hide them in some way, shape, or form. Right. And you try to like get rid of them. You gotta excuse yourself to the bathroom and kind of like put something in front of you to walk there so nobody sees. Those aren't the once same. It, those are different it, boners. No, no. But once it went away, I was good. When those went away for you, finally, did you just have like no. look like you? Put yourself? No, and that's that's what makes me know that those kind of boners are different than. So, and I will admit, those did not, I didn't get pre-cum from those either, and I was just curious, like... Yeah, no, it's not just the, the act of my dick getting hard makes it start leaking. So, like, in the, in, in, you know, in high school or wherever, wherever you hit that puberty, middle school, wherever it is, we hit the puberty moment where your dick's just suddenly like, all right, fucking, what's going on in here? And it comes up like a telescope. Um, I didn't, or periscope, I guess is the correct term. Um, no, I don't have... It comes out I'm, like a telescope. I guess your dick doesn't go up. Telescope is probably more... Of a realistic term, well, right? Up periscope versus like out telescope. Yeah. So, as I've gotten older, my dick doesn't like shoot straight up towards my belly button. But like when I was like fifteen, when my dick got hard, it basically touched my belly button. Well, I think that's because you're wearing like tight pants and you try to tuck it in behind <laughs> your belt. Like no, I'm serious. Like you'd be standing. Uh, no, you know, I'm serious too. That's what you would do. Is you no pull naked it up as hot as you can. And, like <laughs> I didn't wear tight pants ever. I wore jinkos for crying out loud. Uh, uh, it's the opposite of tight pants, right? Uh, but no, don't like. Didn't is that is that also a fucking just me sort of thing? Well, no, because I've seen other erections that are like sh kind of straight up. But like yeah, as I've gotten older, they're not. It's not straight up anymore. Now it's kind of points yeah. out like a telescope. But it was definitely yeah, yeah. up like a periscope at one point. Well, I was gonna say mine were. If I was naked, it would straight up in the air. If I was naked, it had an up angle to it, but it was still more out. But once you put on clothes, the clothes kind of pulled it so it. Well, went yeah, up because that's where it had to go. If your jeans didn't have enough right. room for it to just go straight out. No, I'm talking. Like, naked. Are you saying when you were like naked, it was just like up in the air, like yeah, it followed naked, your belly up? I'm naked. Yeah, absolutely. It's pointing straight up. Like if I fucking. Did, was, was it able to, pee. to like put it in an angle that was good for like penetration? Not well, missionary. That is the perfect angle, really. Yeah, I guess. I guess you're right. Yeah, I guess. I yeah, I, guess, I never really thought about that. That up is a much better angle. Like, I mean, I feel like it's kind of like women that have their breasts sag with age and stuff like that. I feel like. You know, <laughs> your dick is sagging now. It is. It absolutely is. Like it doesn't. It doesn't. It knows no longer up periscope. It's out telescope. <laughs> this video title. Our new podcast is going to be called Out Telescope. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Every guest you ask them, so are you still up periscope or out telescope? <laughs> That's <laughs> like how you finish off each episode. That, that, that thing where you guys used to always ask each other about sitting or standing. Yeah. And uh, it's just, you know, up periscope or uh, out telescope. That's just the, <laughs> the new terminology. Uh, well, I think that's a good stopping point for today's episode. Huh. Let's uh, I mean, let's, uh, put in the comments are you up periscope or down <laughs> telescope or out telescope? Oh, God. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks, everybody. See ya.